would like now to give the floor to Kurt. Kurt Korn is a professor emerit of Applied English Linguistics in University of Tübingen and also responsible of a center which I am quite interested in uh, about uh, media and new technologies for language learning, as I understand. Uh, and I think you, you will develop a bit this idea of uh, uh, is a translation a communicative activity? Uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. <coughs> you have to push the key. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me to this floor. It's an honor and it's a huge pleasure. Of course. Um, I, when I started preparing things for um, this discussion, I was given five questions. And so, um, being a good German, I followed these five questions. And um, when I uh, talked to, to um, Anthony uh, and Kirsten before um, our session, they seemed to be slightly disappointed that I would not uh, uh, stand here and rip their report apart. Um, so this, this was not at all my intention. It never was. I like the report very, very much. I think it gives uh, valuable uh, insights uh, based on this literature review and uh, the data. At the same time, of course, it's an extremely complex field. And, uh, and uh, uh, I think one of the overall messages from the report is that we, that, that we have something valuable here in our hands with which we need to move on. Um, so the ball is in our field and, and we need to carry it further. Now the five questions. Um, can translation contribute to effective language learning at all levels? Well, this um, brings me to, um, to come up with one of my favorite topics, and that is concepts, concepts, models, and all these things. So it just depends on what you understand by translation. Of course, this has been raised before, but we cannot um, sort of uh, overestimate this in, in its relevance. If it is a literal a translation, or you could also call it linguistic translation, where uh, the uh, students are asked to activate their grammatical and, uh, and lexical knowledge, then this kind of translation can have a place in language learning and teaching, provided the goal of language learning and teaching is grammar learning and vocabulary learning. And this, of course, was the situation for uh, many, many uh, decades. Now, uh, in, in Germany, but not only in, in Germany, in German schools, uh, things have changed uh, towards um, a, a grammar, uh, towards a communicative language uh, uh, teaching and learning uh, approach. Grammar still has a place, but within a communicative approach. So it's embedded. And um, when we when we take this uh, pedagogic orientation, uh, the traditional uh, literal translation uh, has no place, I would say. I would emphasize the no. Of course, you could find niche applications, but that would confuse and mess up the overall picture for uh, the students. So um, um, with this communicative orientation, a communicative version of translation makes sense, and in um, German schools, this has been implemented and is in the process of being further implemented in learning and teaching and in assessments under the label, this was mentioned before, of mediation. Um, and mediation, um, communicative translation, uh, I would argue, um, plays a significant role. First, of course, in terms of learning objectives, acquiring this communicative learning skill, or rather complex of skills, is a value in itself in our modern multilingual uh, society, and where the learning objective, the overall learning objective, at the same time includes things like intercultural communication. And um, it has also a value because of um, the uh, pedagogical rub-off effects. When you engage in, in, in communicative uh, translation, you engage in all the comprehension and production activities and skills that are also relevant in unilingual communication. So I would think there is this, this rub-off effect. Um, 
it is difficult to study this in research and, and the report uh, commented on some of the results. My feeling is that uh, these studies uh, that are available focus more on what shows up on the level of outcomes and uh, they focus less on the kind of of processes uh, learners engage in. This might be interesting from a sort of social constructivist uh, uh, processing uh, perspective. Regarding levels, I would argue once you adopt the communicative t le uh, translation um, uh, concept, uh, it applies to all levels. I mean, like you, you don't start uh, while speaking in, in, in uh, after one year or for two years, but you do it all right from the start. You need it all, and uh, and out there, when you look at in communicative translation, uh, like in in the in the guise of community interpreting, little children do it with their parents in migration context and and and, and so forth. Second question: If translation does not form part of the language learning curriculum, is there a willingness now in Germany? Um, as I said, we have this uh, shift towards uh, mediation. In the report, uh, I, I wasn't entirely sure whether this was criticized or not. Um, there was this, this, this sort of uh, certain ambivalence for me as a reader, but I would see it as, as something positive. And um, I would like to say why. Uh, I think it, it's important to see it in the, in the broader context in, in Germany. Um, Translation in the German educational mind, whether in school or at university, is seen, is conceptualized as a literal translation. That's it. When you say translation, it's literal translation. So if you want to introduce a communicative version or communicative versions of translation, you better use a new term. Now, mediation has been around. It has also been around in translation studies. And um, uh, so I think it makes sense uh, to uh, use it this way. And there's still a big problem to fill it with content for teachers who are used to literal translation. So, uh, third question, um, how can translation as a method of language learning uh, be made attractive and motivating? Um, my first question would be, well, is it a method? In the old days, I would say yes. It was used as a method. Um, and this made sense as long as the language was taught as a system. Uh, but now communicative translation, should we see it as a method? I hesitate here. I mean, there are, of course, pedagogical uses of translation, but which are more on the side of, of literal uh, translation activities then. Uh, I would rather prefer to see uh, communicative translation first as a part of intercultural, multilingual communicative competence. It is part of this. And as such, it is um, a relevant learning objective a multilingual intercultural learning objective. And second, a communicative translation, as I said before, is a highly complex, comprehensive competence that integrates most of the competencies that are required for successful unilingual communication. And here's this, this rub-off effect, um, in particular since um, um, Comprehension and production under translation conditions is more challenging. So you have a certain pushing effect here as well. If you think of pushed Mary Swain's push output and languaging. It is a common observation that people are not only students, but also translators, professional translators, do a wonderful job when they understand and produce under unilingual conditions. And when they do this under translation conditions, they, well, do a, well, a, a less good job more, more, uh, more often than not. Why? This, they are able to understand. They are able to produce. But under translation conditions, this is different. Now I ramble on. 
and I have access to my linguistic means of expression, and I'm master of what I'm saying, and in the end I say, okay, this is what I wanted to say, which is slightly wrong. So it's this, this, this the forming of your ideas while you are talking, while you are writing. And, and this is something which needs to be acquired when you learn to translate. And when you push students, language learning students, to exercise their comprehension and production skills under these conditions, I think they will develop um, a, uh, they will further enhance their comprehension and production skills for uh, unilingual uh, conditions. And then, of course, there is this, um, this interesting uh, dimension, of course, of, of regarding intercultural and multilingual awareness and regarding sort of multilingual uh, flexibility and all these things. Now, attractiveness, and um, is it motivating? I think it all depends on to what extent it will be uh, possible for you as a teacher to make things authentic for the students. And uh, translating in this communicative sense, I have the feeling is inherently uh, motivating. It ties in with real communication much better than um, uh, other activities that are uh, done in the classroom. Uh, just think of um, uh, uh, movies and subtitling. So students could engage in this. Pop songs and summary writing, interpreting in the other language, or community interpreting, or rather peer interpreting. This could be combined with intercultural contexts, um, say in my favorite topic in uh, tailor collaboration uh, environments, and where they uh, help each other out using and practicing their uh, communicative translation facilities. This also brings in lingua franca, and now I do not mean English as a lingua franca, but rather lingua franca in the sense of using one second language for real life communication purposes in order to bridge gaps of understanding and communication and so forth. This has a pedagogical uh, potential. Um, fourth question, examples of the pedagogical value of translation. Um, I think uh, the examples I gave fit in here. And uh, I would like to add that it is important to uh, place communicative translation in this broader context of um, intercultural uh, communication and multilingual communication. Intercultural communication figures quite uh, prominently in our educational uh, standards in, in Germany, unfortunately so far only with regard to the target language. So uh, something about um, immigration laws in Arizona or, or things like these. Uh, not the kind of intercultural competence we uh, think of. Fifth, a question, um, which highly needed skills in today's society does translation, translation help understand and prepare for? I think, again, uh, the above, from intercultural multilingual awareness to uh, multilingual flexibility to enhancing one's comprehension and uh, production skills. But this requires teacher education, or well, first it requires teachers who can do all this, and the traditional teacher with the traditional training in universities and teacher seminaries, I don't think that they will get this kind of competence. They're in these institutions. I am involved in, in, in teacher education in Germany at the university level. So continuous teacher education is, 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 is required here, and it has to be based on research, informed by research, research in these aspects that have been mentioned regarding the impact of communicative translation on language students and teachers' students, language acquisition beliefs and attitudes, processes and outcomes in terms of knowledge and skills and, um, of course, intercultural communicative competence. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for what you Perhaps one question, one question about mediation. I mean, exactly in this context of language learning, and we use a lot 
of mediation <laughs> and the European Commission in our policies. What, what does it mean in, in this context? Well, in this context, it means that um, uh, you step away from literal translation, for instance, writing a summary of uh, a text in the first language, write it in the second language. It's always target language oriented in, in German schools. And uh, I think um, it's overwhelmingly, unfortunately, written translation, not uh, interpreting. So this would, of course, be very, very interesting. But it's this kind of thing, sort of summarizing or with an interpretive touch and uh, these things, or you have a text and then you, then you engage in, in a, a, a kind of conversation or dialogue. So it's very much along the lines of what we are familiar with from translation studies when we look at, at Scopus theory and, and all these things, or so where the purpose of, 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 of the text uh, uh, changes. Yes. Thank you, Shin.